Hello and welcome back to Fujitsu World Tour London 2018, where we continue to bring you Facebook Lives by Vertical. To recap, if you're a technologist, for example, within the transport sector, all you need to do is go and seek out our transport video, and hopefully there'll be insight and information relevant to the challenges you're facing right now, and probably some information that you should be debating within your boardrooms. Up next, we're going to be speaking with Marcus Robbins, who's the head of strategy and portfolio here at Fujitsu, and we're going to be talking testing and digital transformation. Off camera, um, a moment ago, Marcus, we were talking about the changing role of testing and how it's now far earlier in the project life cycle than perhaps it was previously. Well, that's right. Organisations are now having to change the way in which they deliver their technology projects. The reason they're having to do that is, of course, to keep up with the pace of change which is happening in the marketplace, the amount of competition they've got. So they need to be uh, more agile, they need to be more nimble, and IT are having to respond to that. So IT are starting to look at techniques like agile, they're looking at DevOps, and in order to do that successfully, they're having to bake in quality right the way through the cycle. That means all of the testing disciplines which have existed in the past are still there, but they're now integrated fully into the delivery cycle. So right from the start of a project, right the way through to continuous integration, which is what organizations are adopting, there will be testing baked into that absolutely throughout. Given the role it has in sort of proving delivery and proving value, is the boardroom aware of the changing landscape of testing, or is this still part with our technology teams? I think it still sits with the technology teams. It's almost like a hidden thing that exists within a project delivery, is that when we do some stuff, well, we're going to need to do some testing in it. But testing is not about... It shouldn't really be thought of as testing. It should be thought of about quality and continuous quality management. And it's, there's a lot of evidence that says the earlier you do testing when you're doing delivery, the bigger the impact is. And there's, there's an order of magnitude cost of testing at the requirement stage versus when you ship something actually into a live environment. So organizations do need to bake it in very early. They do need to start thinking about using things like DevOps and how testing fits into that and actually underpins DevOps. One of the keys to DevOps is, of course, automation. If you're going to continuous um, integration, you have to have automation built into it. The automation is based on uh, components passing tests before they can move to the next stage in the cycle. So tests are baked into the automation, which is essential to continuous integration. So if you're going to move to DevOps, you can't really do it without getting testing right. Let's talk digital transformation. I, I sometimes shudder when I use that, that phrase. We, we've been banding it around for, what, a decade now, if not more. I know Fujitsu right now has a really interesting philosophy that um, digital transformation isn't just about the technology requirements, but also the cultural requirements within, within businesses. Just explain to us a bit about that sort of change in landscape. So I think it comes back to now what we view as, as digital is that you cannot separate technology and business. They're, they're joined up now. And we talk about technology-enabled business and technology-driven business. It, you should think of them as almost one thing now. But it's really about changing some fundamentals within an organization. So for an organization to be responsive to consumers and its customers, which is ultimately what it's there to serve, or in public sector to citizens, then they have to focus on them. They have to move at a speed that suits the market, that also keeps them ahead of the competition. In order to do that, they're going to have to change what they do. If they need different results, they have to change what they do. Changing what you do requires you to change the way you think about what you do. And in order to change the way you think about what you do, you have to change what you believe. So organizations are going to increasingly have to look deeply into their cultural roots to see what they need to do to exist in this new world because most organizations were built for a world that doesn't exist anymore. So they need to re-engineer themselves to be a corporation which is fit for the world in which they now find themselves. And culture is at the core of that. Culture is the most fundamental change they'll need to make. Some of the interviews we were doing earlier, we were talking um, with stakeholders around Workplace 2025 and the need to um, be more values driven with the younger generation coming through. I know you've got some, some views on that, but also when we were talking with the hybrid IT team, they, they spoke about the challenges of legacy systems with the new legacy people with, with, with new people, this has got to present a big change management headache for boardrooms if they're going to deliver on these briefs. It does uh, create a very big challenge for them because they're, 
this is not something that's going to be a short-term thing. If you look at the pace of change, yes, it is very fast, but large organizations have a massive legacy infrastructure. And it actually doesn't make sense to try and throw that all away, out straight away and try and go at a ridiculous pace to new technologies. You've got, you've got to find something that matches the pace of the business. You've got to find something that matches the pace of organizational change. So hybrid is going to be around for a long time. So it's, it's effectively trying to manage coexistence more than it is managing a short-term transition because they will need to maximize the value they can get from their legacy estate whilst moving towards new technologies, new capabilities in the organization, and indeed new models for delivering those technologies into the organization. And of course, the other side of that, as you, as you point out, is there's a people aspect to that. People need to adopt new skills within the organization for the new technologies, but also changing service models around the old technology. So there is, a, there is a lot of change to take place at the individual level, which actually represents a great opportunity for people who've been doing things in the same way for many years. It gives them a chance to branch out, try new skills. So I think there is a, a way of doing that in an organization that actually the people will want to champion because they will want to embrace some of these new challenges. Do you think the boardroom, and specifically the, the CEOs, is he or she aware of the amount of change that, that's upon them? I think they're aware to a large extent of the need for a large change. In a number of cases, they haven't quite been able to grasp the, the depth of the change that will take place in the organization because it isn't just about new technologies. It isn't just about perhaps new channels to engage with your customers. It isn't about a bit of process automation and AI. All of those things are important, but it's about fundamentally changing how you work because you have to adapt to the market. It's fundamentally changing how you engage, which means you have to think about your customers differently. You have to think about your employees differently. And that's the core of the change they need to get their heads around, is how do we, again, go back to changing our beliefs so that we can embrace our employees, we can embrace our customers in the right way to support that change. And I guess even once they, they, they've kind of understood that and sort of mapped it, going and delivering that, the different layers of management, that, that's got to be a challenge in its own right. It is a different challenge. Um, and I think one of the biggest challenges is most organizations are hierarchical. They've been hierarchical since Frederick Winslow Taylor back in Bethlehem Steelworks in the 1860s. Um, and they're going to have to look at those models. They're going to have to look at the people who sit in the middle layers of the hierarchy who have basically reached a position because they know the way things are done around here. And the way things are done around here needs to change. So you can see the appetite for change at a, at a C level, at the board level. You can see in many cases an appetite for change, um, if you like, at the shop floor, the field worker, the knowledge worker level. It's the layer in between which is going to have to fundamentally change. But there is an opportunity for those people to actually become the agents of change within the organization. They know how it works really well. They know the people. They know the customers. They can be the drivers of that change if they're empowered to do so. Interesting. Final question. If there was one message you could land with um, C-suite that are, that are watching this, what would it be? The first one is really, and I will do two if that's okay. Sure. The first one is, as I said, technology and business, they're not separate things. Okay. They're one thing. You have to consider every change to business with a technology lens as well. You have to consider every change to technology with a business lens. Once you start to do that, that's actually digital. And the second thing, I'll go back to culture. If you change your beliefs, to cope with the new world you find yourself, you've got a good chance of being successful in transforming the organization, but you do have to take on that cultural change. Thanks very much for your time. Really interesting insight. And hopefully that has prompted you to consider on how this is going to be impacting your business. As always, if you have any questions uh, and you'd like Marcus to pick up on those, drop us a note on the social channels and we will get those questions answered for you. We're going to continue to bring you developments from Fujitsu World Tour here in London. More to come.